so gross. Nervous flyer? You know, what are the odds of dying in a plane crash? 20,000 to one? Why would you say that to someone? Go smack him in the face. Wow, really reassuring, thank you. You don't need to lie to him, sir. You can smack him in the face. Are we getting our first demon possession, folks? Have a nice flight, sir. Oh, I'm counting on it. Oh, the man is freaking out. Um. Oh, yeah, I like that CGI. Looking good. Excuse me. I gotta stretch my legs. Hey, what the hell are you doing? My child! Buckle your seatbelts, guys. Buckle your seatbelts. Did you buckle in? I mean, she must have, right? I mean, it's Sam. Don't try and trick me with this creepy music and the weird standing. He's 18 feet tall. Of course it's Sam. Morning, sunshine. Oh. When was the last time you got a good night's sleep? I don't know. Just a little while, I guess. It's not a big deal. <laughs> Look, I appreciate your concern. Oh, well, I'm not concerned about you. It's your job to keep my ass alive, so I need you sharp. <laughs> Seriously, you still having nightmares about Jess? Wouldn't you be? But it's not just her, it's everything. Oh, this job. Man, it gets to you. Well, you can't let it. You can't bring it home like that. What? It never keeps you up at night? You're never afraid? No, not, not really. Not yet. <laughs> That's not fear. That is precaution. Hello? It's, uh, it's Jerry Panowski. You and your dad helped me out a couple years back. Can we talk in person? Thanks for making the trip so quick. I ought to be doing you guys a favor, not the other way around. Dean and your dad really helped me out. Your dad said you were off at college, is that right? Yeah, I was. You know, he was real proud of you, I could tell. You know, he talked about you all the time. He did? Yeah, you bet he did. I got something I want you guys to hear. It sounded like it was up your alley. It's the cockpit voice recorder for United Britannia Flight 2485. <laughs> Over 100 people on board, only seven got out alive. Any way we can take a look at the wreckage? Fellas, the NTSB has it locked down in an evidence warehouse. No way I've got that kind of clearance. No problem. <laughs> You've been in there forever. You can't rush perfection. All right, so what do you got? Definitely EVP on the cockpit voice recorder. <laughs> OK. There were seven survivors. Coming after him. So what do you think, in a haunted flight? There's a long history of spirits and death omens on planes and ships like Phantom Travelers. All right, so survivors, which one you want to talk to first? Third on the list, Max Jaffe. I don't understand. I already spoke with Homeland Security. Right. Some new information has come up. Just before the plane went down, did you notice anything unusual? You checked yourself in here, right? Can I ask why? I was delusional. Then just tell us what you thought you saw. There was this man. He had these eyes, these uh, black, eyes. black eyes. He opened the emergency exit. That's impossible, right? I mean, I looked it up. There's something like two tons of pressure on that door. I mean, it goes without saying. It just doesn't make any sense. You know what we need to do is get inside that NTSB warehouse and check out the wreckage. If we're going to go that route, we better look the part. Ooh. Man, I look like one of the Blues Brothers. No, you don't. You look more like a seventh grader at his first dance. <laughs> Either way, I'm into hey. it. <laughs> what is that? It's an EMF meter. Reads electromagnetic frequencies. Yeah, I know what an EMF meter is, <laughs> but why does that one look like a busted up Walkman? Because <laughs> that's what I made it out of. It's homemade. Surprise himself. Yeah, I can see that. You gotta be so snarky, Sam. What Walkman has lights Check on the side? Check out the emergency door handle. Sulfur? This stuff? One way to find out. <laughs> it's like getting back on a horse, not even a horse, more like a pony. Look, Chuck, we don't have to do this today. I'm not trying to rush. The waiting is worse. Okay, we're filling up the tank, then we go. So it only goes to nervous travelers? This stuff is covered in sulfur. Yeah, there's not too many things that leave behind a sulfur residue. Demonic possession? 
That would explain how a mortal man would have the strength to open up an emergency hatch. Yeah, but this goes way beyond floating over a bed or barfing pea soup. I mean, it's one thing to possess a person, but to use them to take down an entire airplane. You ever heard of something like this before? Never. It's so interesting because it happens all the time later on. Let's do this. How are you feeling? I feel great. What are you doing? Every religion and every world culture has the concept of demons and demonic possession. According to Japanese belief, certain demons are behind certain disasters, both natural and man-made. One causes earthquakes, another causes disease. And this one causes plane crashes? I don't know, man. This isn't our normal gig. I wish Dad was here. Yeah, me too. Hello? Dean, it's Jerry. Oh, hey, Jerry. My pilot friend. Chuck Lambert is dead. He and his buddy went up in a small twin. About an hour ago, the plane went down. All right, so that's two plane crashes involving Chuck Lambert. This demon sounds like it was after him. Went down exactly 40 minutes into flight. So did flight 2485. All right, it rained for 40 days. The number means death. Oh. And there have been six plane crashes over the last decade that all went down exactly 40 minutes in. Her only wild card is the flight attendant, Amanda Walker. Right. Her sister Karen said her flight leaves Indianapolis at 8 p.m. It's her first night back on the job. Right there. They're boarding in 30 minutes. We're getting on that plane. Well, well, no, just hold on a second. That plane is leaving with over 100 passengers on board. That plane is going to crash. I know. Then we're getting on the plane. We need to find that demon and exercise it. Meet me back here in five minutes. Are you OK? He's a fan fly. No, not really. What? What's wrong? Well, I kind of have this problem with uh... flying. It's never really been an issue until now. <laughs> You're joking, right? Do I look like I'm joking? <laughs> no. Why do you think I drive everywhere, Sam? <laughs> You said it yourself, the plane's gonna crash. Look, Dean, we can do it together. I can do this one by myself. I'm not seeing a third option here. Come on. Oh, was this, when was this? You don't need a passport to fly? They wouldn't have had passports on them. Just try to relax, just try to shut up. <laughs> I like how much Sam is enjoying this. I don't like flying either. <laughs> You mean Metallica? Mm -hmm. Calms me down. <laughs> Who is it possessing? It's usually gonna be somebody with some sort of weakness, you know, a chink in the armor that the demon can worm through. This is Amanda's first flight after the crash. If I were her, I'd be pretty messed up. Is it gonna possess Dean? Because he's a, he's a little chink. All right, well, that's gotta be Amanda back there. I'll go talk to her, and uh, I'll get a read on her mental state. If she's possessed, she'll flinch at the name of God. Oh, hey. okay. What? Say it in Latin. Uh, I know. Okay. Hey. What? Uh, in Latin, it's Christo. Dude, I know I'm not an idiot. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is your first officer speaking. Cristo. Oh. I'm sorry, did you say something? Cristo? I, I, di I didn't. And nothing, never mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> said Cristo? Yeah. yeah. There's no demon in her. So if it's on a plane, it can be anyone. Come on, that can't be normal. Hey, hey, it's just a little turbulence. Sam, this plane is going to crash, okay? So quit treating me like I'm freaking full. You need to calm down. Well, I'm sorry, I can't. If you're panicked, you're wide open to demonic possession, so you need to calm yourself down right now. It kind of ditched that later on, that you have to have a chink in your armor, but I guess maybe everybody Good. needs it. Chink. Found an exorcism in here that I think is gonna work. Well, first things first, we gotta find it. <laughs> no, man, don't do that. Anything? No, nothing. How much time we got? <sighs> Fifteen minutes. Maybe the thing's just not on the plane. Maybe it's one of the pilots. Cristo. She's not gonna believe this. 12 minutes, dude. All right, this is gonna sound nuts, but we just don't have time for the whole The Truth Is Out There speech right now. All right, look, we know you were on flight 2485. We know something brought down that plane, and it was a mechanical failure. And we need your help, because we need to stop it from happening again. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm very busy. The pilot from 2485, Chuck Lambert, he's dead. Wait, what? Down a plane crash. Now, that's two plane crashes in two months. That doesn't two strike months. you as strange. Oh, wow, there's a big uh, gap in look, there. there was something wrong. Amanda, you have to believe us. Well, how am I supposed to go into the cockpit and get the Whatever it takes. Do whatever it takes. Okay. Now, what's the problem? Oh, 
Regna Terrae, Cantate Deo, Solite Domino. And your she take with this the end day. I know what happened to your girlfriend. She must have died screaming. Even now she's burned. Keep reading, Sam. Sam! Let's uh, uh, pretend to your ass. And you'll be good. I got him. Who's? <gasps> Now it's gonna manifest or go to somebody else. Ah! Oh. There's it is the plane! Is there a priest on board? Moose Reach! <laughs> Team's face. Did Amanda steal a passenger's chair? Was that like God helping out? Thanks, Chuck! <laughs> He's so funny. We got our pretty girl, thank you. Let's go. It knew about Jessica. Sam, these things, they, they, they read minds. They lie. All right, that's all it was. Maybe. Your dad's gonna be real proud. Hey, you know, Jerry, how did you give my cell phone number anyway? I've only had it for like six months. Your dad gave it to me. What? Well, when did you talk to him? Well, I mean, I didn't exactly talk to him, but uh, called his number, his voice message said to give you a call. Oh. I've called dad's number like 50 times. It's been out of service. This is John Winchester. Can't be reached. If this is an emergency, call my son Dean. He can help. I'd be pissed. They really work to make the car a character. Episode four: Phantom Traveler. Director Bobby Singer. I mean Robert Singer. Eric Kripke and Richard Haddam were the writers. The monster of the week was a demon. Just like the Vengeful Spirits, there are a lot of pop culture references to demons and demonic possession. Sumerians believed that any body or mind illness was caused by sickness demons. In Islam, this one I found particularly interesting. Demonic possessions were blamed on jinn among other creatures but we meet a jinn later on in the show so i'll do some research on them when we when we get to that episode exorcisms also go across all faiths and asking the gods or god for protection demon possession seemed to be a way to explain mental illness before we had a real understanding of what that was or just bad behavior i think you know like the devil made me do it kind of thing about the episode all the planes that this particular demon was crashing were crashing 40 minutes into flight 40 is an important number in christianity dean calls it biblical numerology. And biblical numerology is actually just a system in which the Bible is numbered. But 40 is an important number across multiple religions. It's used in the Sikh faith and the Hindu faith. Sumerian god Anki is sometimes written as the number 40 in place of this god's name. In terms of the Abrahamic traditions, it's very important. Noah, like they said in the show, 40 days and 40 nights. Noah also waited 40 days from when the tops of the mountains were covered with water to, I don't know, go wherever he go, did what God told him to do. For Islam, Muhammad was 40 when the Archangel Gabriel spoke to him for the first time, and he also had 40 followers. The writers put in this little tidbit, I guess, that one of the planes crashes in Nazareth. So just layering on the biblical references here. I love Dean's Fear of Flying. It was so funny. How Sam was just enjoying it so much was also great. Other than that, we have the demon mentioning Jess and Dad's phone being turned on. So those are two things that are really helping the overall story arc. One thing about like the show that I find interesting is the whole demon possession happens from a chink in the armor thing. If memory serves, they totally go away from that later. Uh, we also don't see what happens to the pilot in this episode after he survives the possession, which is something that I think we see later on. Like, they go through a phase where they try and save all the people. Oh, my little light just turned off there. What was I saying? Oh yeah, if I remember correct, the show goes through a phase where they try and save everybody who's possessed and actually care about the human who's being possessed. Later on, they don't care at all. They're just indiscriminately killing the host along with the demon. Yeah, other than that, yeah, good plot movement. I give this episode three out of five Harry Potter lightning bolts, mostly because again, this is not one I'm gonna go back and rewatch. 
but I did enjoy it, and Dean's Fear of Flying was hilarious. May the force be with you. Live long and prosper. I'll be back.